I'm going to talk about why churches should avoid using music from false churches such as Hillsong, Bethel, Elevation and others. I'm going to give you some real life examples of people that have been impacted by this issue. I'm going to tell you how a church might respond to people that raise these concerns how I would respond to that. And then I'm going to give you an illustration which will put this whole thing into perspective. So first of all, the songs themselves. Now, I would personally consider these songs to be a bit theologically light on and tailored towards emotionalism. But even with that aside, if we were to say that the songs themselves are theologically okay, there are still problems. To simply say that because the lyrics are okay, that makes it okay to play them, is to close one's eyes to a number of other issues. And the first one is that these songs come from false churches that teach false teachings and even heresies in some cases. I'll talk about that a bit more soon. But the reason that we can't separate the songs from the church that they come from is because these songs are the church's primary evangelism tool to hook people in, to introduce people to their false churches and their false teachings, leading them into error and to danger. And there are so many countless testimonies of people speaking about this online and people that I've interacted with personally as well. So this isn't something that's theoretical. It's something very dangerous that's happening. And a problem is that when a church is playing these groups, the church is introducing people to these false churches. They're exposing people to these false churches. They're promoting these false churches and what they're doing is they're actually endorsing these false churches because people will come into church and say, well, if my church plays these songs from these groups, then these groups must be okay. They must be safe. They must be good. And what's actually happening is rather than protecting the sheep from the wolves is that they're actually opening up the door to the sheep and letting the wolves inside. This is also problematic because the church, every time one of these songs is played, pays royalty to these false churches, helping to increase their resources, their influence, and their reach. So essentially, the church is actually partnering with these false churches. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6.14, For what partnership does light have with darkness? None. Jesus said in Matthew 7.15, Beware of false prophets. They come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. And Ephesians 5.11 says, Take no part in the deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And rather than exposing people to these false churches, we should be exposing these false churches so that people can know to stay away from them. What I would say is that we need to completely do away with using music from these problematic, false, heretical churches altogether and replace it with the abundance of good music that's out there. Then all of a sudden we're pointing people to good music that is biblically, theologically sound, and we're promoting these groups and leading people to safety, not to danger. Now I said that I would talk about some real life examples. So I get a lot of correspondence on the channel, and I had a family that reached out to me and they said that they were having problems because their church was playing music from these false churches. And they spoke to the leaders in their church and the leaders didn't have any intention of changing this. So these people actually left this church. There's someone else that I was in contact with that was struggling with this issue for a long time. And then all of a sudden they stopped going to church because of this, even though they desperately want fellowship. And there's another person that he's looking for a church. He desperately wants fellowship, but he can't find a good church that doesn't play songs from these false and heretical groups. And he refuses to worship to the songs of these groups. So how should we look at this? Is this a reasonable way for someone to feel? Imagine that you're standing there in worship. You're ready to worship God, to give all of yourself over to him, an integral part of the service. And then all of a sudden, the song comes up. The name comes up on the screen, Hillsong, Bethel, Elevation, Phil Wickman, any of the people associated with these these false groups. And then all of a sudden, what comes to mind is the teachings, the false teachings and the heresies of this church that that you are singing along to, to the songs of churches that promote word of faith, new apostolic reformation, little God's theology, 
saying that Jesus was a man operating in the power of the Holy Spirit rather than God, that Jesus was the first man born again, grave soaking, spiritual card reading, charging people money to teach them to do fake miracles, countless false prophecies, so serious that it was punishable by death in the Old Testament. And then you've got word of faith and prosperity and the promotion of every uh, infamous false teacher under the sun like Joel Osteen, uh, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland and many others. Um, many scandals including sexual scandals and cover-ups. And this is what's coming into the mind of the person when they are trying to worship God. I think it's absolutely reasonable that a person would feel that there is a stumbling block before them, that they would feel that they are hindered from worship, knowing not just these things, but that their church is actually promoting, exposing people to, endorsing and supporting these false churches every single time one of these songs is played. Now, a person might raise these concerns with a church, and a lot of the times a church is reluctant to make these changes. And what they often point to is Romans 14. They'll say, see, we can have different opinions on this issue. Um, and what we should do is just respect the preference of the people that are choosing to play these songs, right? Now, I could agree that we could apply Romans 14 here if we were talking about the style or the genre of music, you know. Uh, someone might like hymns rather than contemporary music, but they choose to play contemporary music. Uh, the music might come from a different theological background or denomination that disagree on minor secondary issues. I have no problems with applying Romans 14 to those situations, and I believe we should, and we should support um, the church in that way. However, it's very different when we're talking about groups that are steeped in false teaching a heresy, error, and scandals. And you have people whose consciences are defiled from worship because they cannot in good conscience worship knowing that these songs are being promoted, endorsed, and supported. Whilst it's true that there's no such thing as a perfect person making worship music, it's also true that not all people that make worship music are from false or heretical churches. I have no problem with the church using music made by imperfect people, but I do have a problem with churches using music made by people from false and heretical churches. I would say that the, the, the principle that I would apply to this situation would be in 1 Corinthians 8, where it's talking about food sacrifice to idols. And in that particular instance, Paul says that he won't eat meat sacrificed to idols if it's going to defile the conscience of the people who are there. So what would the answer be? I would say the answer would be to simply remove these songs altogether. I don't see any point in continuing to play these songs. Think about this, right? Paul says here in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, he says, Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat lest I make my brother stumble. And that's the attitude that we should have. What are the advantages of continuing to play this music? What We're getting to play our favorite songs that people might like more. That's a, that's a very man-centered, that's a very carnal reason to play these songs. It's certainly not a biblical reason. What are the advantages of doing away from these songs? Well, we completely detach ourselves from these false heretical groups. We remove anyone out of the danger of being exposed to these groups. We're promoting good groups. Royalties are going to support those groups. Now, I don't think royalties should, should be charged for, for any Christian worship music in a church. I think it's ridiculous. But that aside, money is going to support good groups that people can trust theologically and we're leading people in safety. And on top of that, we are able to worship in unity together without a defiled conscience. And this creates every positive. There are so many songs that can be chosen from. Why choose this, this, and this group? A few groups because they're more popular. When you've got this, 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 you've got so many songs you can choose from. Why would you have to choose songs from a false church that has these problems and that is defiling the conscience of the people that are worshiping in the congregation? What's more important? To have your favorite or more popular songs played or to make sure that everyone can, can worship God 
as James says, religion which is undefiled from the world. And these groups are very much defiled from the world. Now, I'll give you an illustration here, right? Say that you had a guest speaker that comes to your church. And this speaker, he comes to the front and he preaches a message that's theologically okay. There's no problems with it theologically, right? But then you find out that in his home church and other churches that he's going to, he's actually preaching error. He's preaching all of those things that I mentioned, little God's theology, word of faith, false prophecies, saying that Jesus wasn't God in the flesh. Um, there, there are sexual scandals that he's involved in covering up. And you went to your church leader and said, look, I, I don't know if we should have this person speaking at our church because of all of these issues. Imagine if your church leader then turned around and said to you, well, you know what? As long as they're preaching okay theology in our church, it doesn't matter. What would you actually think if you got that response? Yet this is the exact response that many leaders in churches are giving people today in regards to the worship music that's being played. So what I would say to you is if you are someone that has a strong discernment, you're someone that has strong convictions, Sadly, oftentimes your views will be ignored because there are so many people that have been so influenced by cultural Christianity in terms of what is acceptable today. What I would encourage you to do is I want to validate you and tell you that your convictions are good. They are God honoring. You're desiring to stand on biblical truth no matter what anyone tells you. And I would speak to the leaders at your church if you feel comfortable doing that and raise these concerns. They may do something about it, they may not, but if you raise your voice and make it heard, then we can bring more attention to this particular issue and there's more chance that something may be done about it. So leave your comments below friends. I know that a lot of you are frustrated by this issue and rightfully so. Let me know what you think and I look forward to talking to you in upcoming videos. God bless you, friends.